Okay, it's the end of the session. I'm here. You can't see them, but Todd is right here. And this is Betty. And this is their roadmap to success. Now, we primarily worked with Todd. The video that we would have above is about... Uh, thank you. Uh, is about uh, helping Todd get over his... Uh, his I don't say jealousy. I just think... Uh, He's trying to control the situation a little bit. And if he darts towards me, he can put it back upstairs. But you seem to be doing okay, buddy. All right, so um, let's talk about their interaction together because it's really important. So uh, the guardians are getting them together a little bit more each, uh, each day, but they're picking and choosing their battles, which is smart. A lot of times when we have dogs that have fought or they don't get along for whatever reason, we keep them separated. That's called maintenance. It's good to do temporarily because it's a nice way to prevent anything from getting worse, but it doesn't help it get better. So I like it. when Betty goes to our puppy class, when she comes home, she's going to be tired. That's a wonderful time for them to get together. And so maybe in the backyard or here, whatever you feel comfortable with. The long-term confinement area here, this fencing makes it great. They can be together in the room. So if she's in there, we can give her a bully stick and him a bully stick. The guardian's already doing that. They can practice the click for looks that we did where that uh, basically uh, every time he looks at her, he gets a click. But again, make sure you do that from over here, over there, in the bedroom over there, uh, or the office over there, on the couch. So you're kind of getting them the, all the different angles. Um, I also like the guardians to walk them together. Um, dogs process things literally by moving forward. And also when we're outside, there's a lot of distractions. So we can take them on a walk together, that's great. And since they're, uh, he's, uh, we have a little, some problems doing that sometimes. So you might want to walk on opposite sides of the street. You might also practice walking them uh, in the yard. Maybe you have him outside the fence and her inside the fence, and you're walking just up and back along the fence, getting used to that. And again, don't be afraid to give treats. Take a step, take a step or two and give each one of them a treat. Can I uh, give you something to chew on? There you go. Um, and so um, the idea is we want to build in more and more positive associations. So um, one thing we could do is um, also use the baby gate uh, to go just across here. So he could be in this room and she could be in there and have a little bit more access. So I prefer these as opposed to uh, leashes. Leashes uh, that can create some tension on the leash if the dog is a little bit, uh, if they're pulling, that can create some frustration. And we're, that means we're adding to the situation we normally don't like. We'll get uh, adjust the angle a little bit so we can get more Betty in the shot. All right, um, so uh, let me see. Uh, we started talk about outside talking about um, getting Todd more exercise. Uh, so exercise and stimulation. Uh, Todd right now goes for walks infrequently and just kind of runs around the yard a little bit. And also letting him play together the way you guys have been doing that. That's great. Pick and choose your battles, do it. Uh, rather be short uh, and more successful than push too far and have a, a setback. Um, so, uh, but please continue doing that as best as you can. So basically I talked about some creative forms of exercise, the doggy stairmaster. Now the doggy stairmaster, check with your vet. He's got a little bit of a neurological tick and I don't want anything that's gonna cause problems. So the doggy stairmaster is something you can do, but be mindful of it and check with your vet to make sure your vet's okay with doing that. Um, fetch is a great one. He loves doing fetch. You can play it inside and outside. Um, let me see, uh, we also talked about scent games. There's, it's the fall, you can drop some treats or some kibble in uh, the leaves and he's gotta use his nose to find it. I would like him to get a uh, snuffle mat. She's fed out of a snuffle mat. Uh, but instead of the slow feeder, if we use a snuffle mat, that is uh, energy draining. Uh, it also helps with confidence and, uh, and problem solving. So it achieves a bunch of things. Yes, hey buddy, I'm giving you some love here. Uh, and so uh, also get an Omega Paw Treat Ball. That's the ball that you can feed him, uh, put some of his kibble in. That would be another great thing to put down here and let him kind of nudge that around the floor while she's in here chewing a bully stick. So now they're practicing again, being together. And he's, like, he's enjoying the interaction because he gets a treat or some kibble for, uh, out of it when it comes out. So um, you can also look for all sorts of treat dispensing uh, DIY stuff. Um, you can go to Amazon and Chewy and find different puzzles. Um, you can get like a, uh, a muffin tray, put some treats in each one. He, balls, he's going to be more interested in the ball. So maybe just get some coasters and put coasters on top of those things. So he nudges the coaster off and he gets to lick it up. Uh, scent games, hiding treats around the house and he's got to use his nose to find them. Remember on walks to let him sniff as much as possible. Sniffing burns more energy on a walk than walking. Um, I would also treat him or click for looks when he looks at you on a walk. When you're walking, he looks up to you, click and give him that treat. The more that you click for those looks for when he looks at you on his own, the more proximate present you are, 
the more he's going to be interested in wanting to look at you when you do call him. And I would probably, as soon as he looks at you, say eyes or look or watch me or whatever, <laughs> and then give a treat. And so uh, now looking at the human gets me a treat, sitting gets me a treat. So the more we reward the dog for these positive interactions, the more the dog is going to want to do those things. Uh, let me see. Also, um, uh, let me see. Uh, so that's, uh, you can also get a doggy backpack, but again, check with your vet. If he has any neurological problems with the back, that might not be something they want him to have. Um, I'd like you to start that exercise journal, exercise and stimulation. So a new page of paper each day, write the date at the top, write down the time and how, how long the walk was, the time and the number of fetches, the time uh, that we did the scent games. Um, there's also something called a lick mat. I just bought one, I haven't actually gotten it yet, but you smear peanut butter and you can put it on the wall or somewhere and he's licking it, it releases endorphins. That would be another wonderful thing for him to do while he's near her. So again, he has that positive interaction. Um, and so uh, the idea is to write down the times of the exercise and how much exercise. We also write down uh, anything uh, noteworthy that happened. He barked at the neighbor or, you know, nipped at the dog or whatever the case may be. And after a while, you start noticing, you know, it's after a certain amount of time without getting exercise or stimulation, that's when he's giving the hard stares. So that was when he's darting at people or he's more likely to bark at us or you know, lunge at us more kissing or whatever it is. So the idea is to do that throughout the day, write down the meal, uh, meal times, the exercise, the stimulation with a little bit of detail about those. And then also write down uh, the negative stuff. And then the end of the day, give a letter grade A through F. If it's other than, anything other than an A, then the next day, add a couple extra repetitions to your exercise. Or maybe if it's a really low grade, instead of having up downs on the stair or uh, you know two walks a day, Maybe we did three walks a day or set games twice. We do it five times a day. Ideally, we'd like it doing, every, uh, doing it every two to four hours. Um, uh, always try to end on a good positive one. Uh, um, yes, I know. I'll let you lick on my hands again. Um, so also uh, for him, uh, she's in puppy class. So we send emails with our lessons for the puppy class. So I would just start doing all the lessons you're doing with her. Come home and do it. So she, uh, one of the guardians takes her to puppy class. The other guardian doesn't go very often. Maybe he gets the video and he's working out at home and she's working on a puppy class. Now we both go it together, right buddy? Come. Um, yeah, I don't have anything. She's just licking on my hand. Um, so that keep that exercise journal for about two or three weeks. And after a while, you'll start recognizing how often. And what I want you to do is get in a habit of doing this exercise and stimulation consistently. And after a while, it becomes part of your schedule. And then you're doing it on a regular basis. Remember to be proactive. We want to not wait until there's something negative that happens. We want to get the exercise and stimulation ahead of time to prevent the bad things from actually happening. Oh, you got your little toy there. Um, uh, so name the toys. So all the toys. Call that one, I don't know. Uh, Trump burrito or something like that. it's orange. Um, and so we come up with, uh, and that's passive training, which we'll talk about in a minute. So, um, all right, so that's exercise and stimulation. We'd also like to incorporate some rules and structures so the dogs feel that the environment is a little bit more secure. They see us providing that secure environment that helps us with them seeing us more as, as leaders. I use that word loosely. I'm not a dominance person, uh, dominance trainer. A lot of those guys, leadership based training, alpha roles. That's all BS. You don't want to use that. Positive reinforcement is the only way to go. Um, so basically, we also talked about, uh, uh, for rules and structure, like not being allowed in the kitchen where we're preparing food, not being allowed within seven feet of a human who's eating or her when she's eating, and she should not be allowed within seven feet of him when he's eating. So that way they see that happen at the same time. I would also try to feed them together. I'd like him fed out of a snuffle mat, like I mentioned. It'd be great if he's over there with a the snuffle mat and she's in there with a the snuffle mat. So they're eating at the same time, but there's enough distance. Make sure he doesn't go over towards her and she, I'm, I don't think he will. Uh, and remember, go to the green spot, talk to Suki, um, and just say, uh, yes, and that's, so he's, she's a little bit distressed and he came over, he couldn't see on a camera, but he came over, darted over. That's the sort of thing we want to avoid. Also remember, if he gets the twitchiness, that's when we're going to do the boop game or uh, some, anything else to get him redirected. And if you see he's going to bark, you, you know, like, let's say the neighbor starts barking and you see his ears go up and he stood up, boop! So we want to redirect him. Let's go ahead and put him upstairs because, uh, and if he's starting to get growling, this is three and a half, a little over three and a half hours that we've been here. That's going to be a lot for him to deal with. And so uh, if, don't push too much because if he gets cranky, uh, that's going to make him uh, more likely to not behave the way we want to. I have to shuffle around or when my knees are going to fall asleep. Um, so uh, look for, uh, kind of pick and choose your battles in terms of how much time you're working on those things. But watch for that neurological tick, uh, tick that, we, that we saw and try to get him doing something else rather than doing that. Also uh, look out for him staring. If he's staring especially at her for longer than three seconds in a really stiff, 
He's going from an open mouth to a shut, shut mouth and starts staring. Yeah, you can go ahead and go in there with him, give him a little, her a little attention. Um, but if, if you see him kind of going from an open mouth and then he closes his mouth and stares at her, that's not a good interaction. So that's uh, kind of getting close to his reactive, reactive mode uh, or his limit. So we want to try to redirect at that point. Uh, but if you can get him some new tricks and commands, it gives you different ways to redirect his attention. It also is going to boost his self-esteem and confidence, which is going to help as well. Uh, we also talked about uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is if the dog is initiating contact with you. It comes up and nudges you, paws at you, barks at you, jumps up on you. It's telling you, give me attention. Nothing wrong with attention, but remember, anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're specifically rewarding. So the dog jumps up on you and you pet it, the dog starts to think that jumping up is the proper way to ask for attention. So instead, next time the dog nudges you to pause or any of those things, I want you to give the dog a counter order, tell him to sit, or her if it's her, that's good to do with both dogs. And then if he sits within two seconds, then I pet under the chin or where, you know, somewhere in this area. And then uh, pet as much or as little as you want. Um, if he doesn't sit within two seconds, show him the, do something else. Uh, playing hard to get works really great for dog training as well as does for dating. Um, remember to use a watchword of paycheck. If someone's doing something that you suspect, uh, you come to the room, you suspect they're petting without a purpose, say paycheck, that person stops petting, tells the person the dog to sit. If it sits, they pet, and then they tell the person, actually ask the dog to sit, you just missed it. So it's a nice way for us to keep each other in track. So petting with a purpose is if you want to pet the dog or the dog is initiating contact from you, you tell it to sit first. If the dog uh, does something voluntarily, that's what we call passive training or capturing, uh, or uh, which is basically celebrating the things the dog does that we like. So every time he comes to you or she, when they're a foot away, say the word come, and then you take that last step and then you pet him. Remember the order is the command word, the action, then the reinforcer, which is a treat or reward. After a while, the command word means I'm gonna get the reward, so I'm more likely to want to do that. And you can let her out if you want. You should probably stop barking if that's the case. As long as he's good? Okay. Um, so basically, um, passive training is just observing the dog and waiting for the dog to do desired behaviors and within that two second window, petting. Remember, your, dog, your dog's need the repetition, consistency, and good timing. You only have that two seconds. After two seconds, that might be a potty too. Oh, yeah. um, if you want to figure out, that's fine. Uh, so uh, we're just going to be observant. And so if you see the dog coming to you, uh, if it's about to sit down, if it's about to lay down, if it drinks its water right before it starts drinking, say martini or whatever it is your favorite cocktail is. Come up with a different word for each dog to eat. So every time they're about to eat their first bite of food, we say zucchini or lasagna or you know papagayos or whatever you want to say. So come up with the name of your favorite red dish or restaurant so that becomes a command word. Name all of the individual toys. And the dog goes up and is about to pick up you know, a little piece of pizza, call it, you know, uh, Woodstock's, my favorite pizza place in Santa Barbara. Um, and so the idea is we come up with a little bit of a vocabulary. Um, and the more you pet your dog for the things that you want, the more they're likely to do those particular things. We also talked about premax. Premax is, premax is a principle. Premax means that a less desirable behavior earns me a more desirable behavior. Uh, if, you have, if you have kids, you probably told your kids, if you can clean up your room, then you can go play with your friends. If you, uh, or your boss says, hey, as soon as you finish that project, you can leave for the day. So you're, it's, it's a reward by giving you something that you want. So you can use a premac uh, preparing food. Tell the dog to sit. And once it sits, then you start preparing the food. Um, go to the door, tell it to sit if you want to let it outside. As soon as it sits, then the door opens. So sitting or doing what the human wants gets me the thing I want. It can't be a treat, it needs to be a behavior. So you can do that with uh, getting in or out of the car, getting in or out of the long-term confinement area. Um, uh, when you're playing fetch, make the dogs, I think the guardians already do this, make the dog sit and then, or drop the treat first, or the ball first and then sit. And then not only then do I pick it up and throw it. Um, when you, before you attach the leash, before you prepare food, put the food in the bowl before you put the bowl down. Or in this case, hopefully the snuffle mat. I would definitely get the snuffle mat for him and feed him out of the snuffle mat both meals a day. Um, so, I mean, if you think about it, we snuffle mat twice a day. We use an Omega Paw treat ball once. Um, we use scent games once or twice a day. That's five, in, uh, and then maybe uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, a couple of DIY things, like, you know, the, the muffin tray or whatever I call it. That's five or six things right there of stimulation. Using the brain is very stimulating. So we compare that with going for maybe two 10-minute walks. One 10-minute walk, hey, sweetheart. Uh, yes, this is Betty. Yes. Um, she likes to give kisses. 
Uh, so basically, if we pair that with maybe uh, two walks, so a 10 minute walk in the morning and a 10 minute walk in the evening, that's okay. Um, and uh, let her sniff as much as she wants to do or as much as he wants to do. Um, and again, I'd love to get you at least every day walking them together. Now, a good time to do it is again, when she's gonna have not as much energy because it's gonna be easier for him to deal with it. And when you're on those walks, give him a copious amount of treats. Stewart's beef, freeze-dried beef liver is what I've been using, and he really likes those. So he's able to endure a lot of other things if he knows that you're holding some of that. So hold it close to his nose if you need to. Yeah, she is a firecracker. Look at this, look at this cutie right here. Oh, yes, I'm gonna rub your back. Um, so um, uh, uh, so uh, use those pre-max and get in a habit of doing those things. Get in a habit of petting with verbs, passive training. Do it with both dogs. And if you teach them those new tricks and commands and practice the technique I showed you in the video above, you're going to get to the point where uh, those situations, uh, the interactions, the kisses. Uh, <laughs> yellow labs. Uh, no, no, she's fine. Uh, <laughs> So those, uh, the, kid, the kisses, the interactions, the handing things to each other. Again, make the list as I talked about above and just work on in the video above, work on it and eventually you get to the point where those things are no longer uh, a negative. As a matter of fact, the dog likes it when you kiss, the likes it when you embrace or hand each other things or uh, pet, with, pet the dog. Uh, last thing, I, yeah, make sure I remember, uh, go over that. So again, I'd like you at least once a day to go in here, uh, the female guardian, we don't say names in these videos, and then the other, the male guardian is just handing, uh, giving her treats, giving him treats. Now again, at first, you're almost like boom, boom, boom. After a while, it's treat, one, two, treat, one, two. Uh, and then eventually five seconds, 10 seconds. And eventually the dog is just comfortable with you going in there and hanging out for like five minutes and then I get a treat at the end. But again, try to pair it with those, uh, those bully sticks and do some pair treating on either side of this. That, that works out really well. Um, all right, anything else you want me to cover? I don't think so. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate. Just give me, a, uh, texting is the fastest way to reach me. Um, I get a lot of phone calls and I, as you saw upstairs, a weird one. Um, I don't always answer the phone, but uh, text uh, messages I do. All right, well, this is Betty, and I'm David, and this is Betty and Todd's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.